Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This informative webinar uh, is going to be hosted by John Thomas, myself, Dallas Waite, and Russell Yeager. Uh, we're going to be outlining the development of visualization, 3D design, and augmented reality for our clients today. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick things off with visualization. We want to discuss uh, visualization first, uh, what's been going on with WGI and our visualization services. Uh, we want to state that all the graphics you're going to see during this part of the presentation uh, have actually been developed by uh, WGI staff. Uh, so that's uh, projects covering uh, civil uh, to parking garages, golf courses, and complete streets roadway improvement projects. Uh, we can meet the team now. My name is John Thomas, one of the visualization team leaders. I'm a project engineer with over seven years of experience, all with WGI's transportation group. I was an early adopter of 3D design and visualization, helping to develop WGI's internal 3D modeling training program. I am a trainer for ACEC's Open Roads webinar series on behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation. I have led the efforts of WGI's first visualization service contract for a limited access facility. I'm also pre-certified in 3D design visualization services with both the Texas and North Carolina DOTs. And I'm Dallas Waite, a project engineer with over nine years of experience in transportation and stormwater design. Uh, I hold the same pre-certifications as my counterpart and worked on our 3D modeling training program as well. Uh, I'm also a trainer for the ACEC's Open Roads webinar um, series on behalf of the FDOT. Uh, I helped to craft uh, WGI's 3D workflow and approach for the Florida Turnpike's pilot 3D project uh, down in Miami-Dade County for the Homestead Extension. Uh, I was published in the Florida Engineering Society's journal as well for a paper I wrote on 3D design integration uh, with a colleague of mine in structural engineering, Callie McNeil. So we like to start off with the inspiration uh, for something like this, right? What inspired us to get into visualization services? Well, John and myself realized pretty early on that you know there's a narrow margin for victory when it comes to a lot of our proposals. So in order to succeed, uh, we both agreed that we had to make our designs look and feel as realistic as possible, take them beyond a 2D set of plans. So we took the initiative to develop our visualization services. Now, looking for inspiration from tech leaders uh, in graphics development, we looked outside of the engineering community. Um, we looked across the country, across the world, at what graphics developers were uh, putting together and brought them to our engineering plans. Uh, we became inspired by the endless possibilities of showcasing engineering designs using uh, the latest modeling technology. And we really wanted to bridge the gap that we see between the AEC industry and software developers. One of the biggest problems with designing 2D is that many conflicts can be missed that would be glaring in a 3D environment. The, our main client, the FDOT, has shifted towards 3D plans becoming the standard with their next-gen plans. The largest marketplaces for AEC, like Texas and Florida, are now including pre-certification for 3D design and visualization services. Our industry is years behind the tech industry when it comes to graphics. Most companies are either outsourcing their graphics development or using a graphic designer with no engineering background. This means the final deliverable is just a pretty picture that can't be updated when revisions are needed. These uh, pictures are also not to scale and also don't have slopes and most of the time are uh, flat images. So what was our solution, right? How are we going to take our 2D plans, improve them, create a 3D model? What is the process that we need to go through? Well, first we wanted to create a visualization group that was made up of the engineers, planners, and architects that were working on the design. Uh, we wanted to improve upon these idealized models that, you know, really were just being drawn by somebody else. And we wanted them to have the components of the engineered model as well. So what sets our visualization services group apart is that you're getting an engineered model, a drawing that's to scale, that has all the components of your design, um, but with that visual component as well. 
So we want to provide the clients the most accurate representation of their projects um, beyond, like we said, that, that just that pretty picture. We put together a visualization page on our website. So I'd recommend everybody after this presentation, if you have a chance to go on there, uh, you can look at the portfolio of projects that we've worked on uh, to give you an idea of how we've incorporated visualization on numerous projects. Uh, the image you actually see on the screen here is a 3D uh, model of Banyan Boulevard, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that and actually dive into the model uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, but this is an example of that solution, right? This is an engineered design that you're seeing on the screen. So all the lane widths are correct, the curb types are correct, even the landscaping, uh, which was worked on by our um, landscape architecture group was all developed uh, to match the design uh, that you're seeing on the screen. The core technology of our idea or of this group consists of CAD software that WGI already utilizes, such as Autodesk, Bentley's Open Platform, and SketchUp. We use these softwares to create a 3D model, and then we take that 3D model and import it into our visualization software to bring that model to life. The goal is to continue to enhance our graphics with the most up-to-date visualization softwares. Some of the gaming engines are starting to streamline their process for the AEC industry. Many of the major AEC companies have, a, have or are developing a visualization group as we speak. What sets us apart is that we construct our graphics from design, providing more than a pretty picture for our client. We can also take these images for public meetings on smart boards. We can interact with the, the public and with our clients with our design. Uh, uh, straight up. So let's talk about the uh, the product map and milestones for putting visualization together. So first, where WGI started was creating actual structured groups. So putting together a visualization services group uh, made up of those engineers, architects, um, and planners. We want to then compile all of the data that we had available. So let's pull together our geospatial data, our survey data, our roadway models, and see exactly what we have and how we can get the best use out of it. Uh, training employees, both John and I worked on a training program internally to get our engineers up to speed. Um, we found that it was actually a little bit faster than expected uh, using a lot of the Bentley software. We use Open Roads Designer out of the West Palm Beach office. Uh, one year out, we were trying to figure out how can we incorporate the GIS and BIM data into our models. And two years out, we were ready to deliver a a uh, live rendered model. So we put together something called a cube, which is just your 3D model um, that we're able to deliver to a client and actually interact with that 3D model. Uh, so this is kind of an idea of, of how long it took us to develop this visualization services from creating the group to actually delivering the product itself. Now, how feasible is this process we're talking about, right? How feasible is it to put together visualization services. Um, we get this question a lot from clients, right? Is it expensive? Is it time consuming? You know, what you're showing us looks really great, but how practical is it? Well, when weighed against the opportunities for the public and the client, we think it's absolutely feasible. You know, we've done numerous projects and the response uh, starting with the public has been fantastic. So for public outreach, you're seeing an image on the screen uh, from a, uh, a resident who is living at a project location. This is from their front door. So we've modeled everything on their street, and this was a seawall improvement. We've modeled everything on their street, and they had concerns. How is my property going to be impacted? Am I going to lose my view of the water? Uh, what about parking? So we added in right away. That blue highlighted line you see on the screen there, that's the right of way line. We could, we could assure uh, this person that's where the work is going to stop. Um, we could then show them the project impacts to their property, right? Let's get a look at your view of the water. Let's show you what the landscaping is going to look like. Let's make sure that you understand what the final project is going to um, be laid out as. And for the client, this is fantastic for a client meeting because this isn't just a static image. We can put the client in their project, move around that project space, 
uh, for client meetings and review design components within the 3D model. So we can show you what impacts are going to be, uh, are going to be made on the project site, how it's going to affect, uh, affect people living at that property, um, what potential constructability issues there are going to be. So there are numerous, numerous applications for this, and we think it's absolutely feasible for any project to add this service. So how about the value to your project, right? We touched on a few of these. Um, we've done over 40 projects at this point, uh, not just in our transportation group, but in our planning, landscape, architecture, and civil engineering groups as well. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, you can see a wildlife crossing that was put together for a proposal, uh, a 3D typical section in the bottom right-hand corner. That's also for the Banyan Boulevard project. Uh, and then behind the text, you can see a parking garage that we did where we were able to add different aesthetics and facades onto a parking garage. So, you know, we see a great deal of value on our projects and our pursuits. Uh, you also have a competitive edge when you can bring something like this uh, on a pursuit. It shows a lot more value to the project because, you know, when you're looking at a 2D set of plans, um, there's only so much information that you can fit on a flat surface, but to be able to interact with the project itself makes a big difference. Uh, we're gonna discuss here two of our example projects in a minute. One is the Colonial Parkway PD&E in Orlando. Uh, this was strictly a visualization services contract um, where the design was already put together and we went through several uh, design options with the client visualizing it for them. Uh, the Banyan Boulevard project in downtown West Palm Beach, uh, which was all of our services actually combined in one. So we took our landscape division, we took our uh, roadway division, uh, drainage group, and survey data, and put it all together into a 3D model, uh, and we were able to visualize that. So we'll talk about those two here in a second. In the short time the visualization group has existed, we have constructed fly-throughs, MOT phasing videos, 40 model modeling to visualize construction over the project duration to identify potential spatial and temporal conflicts and schedule. We have delivered live cubes to clients to let them have control over the model. We've, uh, we've created a photogrammetry mesh and overlaid our proposed design on top of that. We have also overlaid our designs on top of existing ground images. We are in the, we are starting to incorporate GIS and BIM data into our models. And if anyone wants to see a certain type of graphic that might not be in this presentation, please just give us a request and we will send you uh, that type of graphic. Uh, I now want to dive into a few examples of uh, graphics that we've created uh, for multiple proposals and for projects. So this first one is going to be a proposal we went after. This is a PowerPoint proposal where we modeled and rendered the entire proposed uh, typical section. This was the preferred alternative. You're able to see everything that the proposed project would consist of, where the new curb is going to be located. We are adding a three foot landscape strip. We're able to show that we are going to have uh, separated bike lanes on the right side uh, to keep them out of the traffic's way. We are showing sight distance from the vehicle perspective of this tip of a vehicle pulling out on this road. We also wanted to point out some conflict areas. As you can see, this uh, cyclist might run into run into a conflict with a car trying to pull out to get ready to pull into trap or pull into the lanes. Uh, we added on street parking, but that could also add another potential conflict if the uh, cyclist was to uh, have a car parked too far to the right, he would have nowhere to get into that separated bike lane. So we were able to show the client everything that this project was going to entail. And the light blue lines on the outside is your right away. So that was an example of one way we've used our rendering to uh, showcase a project. I am now going to pull up the Colonial Parkway project. This is over a nine mile project. It is a visualization service contract that spanned all nine miles and we did half a mile on each side of the proposed roadway. Everything in this model from right away to right away is engineered 
to, uh, is uh, rendered to design. So we were provided with the design with the profiles and the horizontal alignment. We were able to take that geometry and construct this proposed design. This is the preferred alternative. They had three alternatives. This one was the best of both, where it would shift from northbound or from north to south to uh, reduce the right away takes. In this model, we modeled, we uh, simulated the traffic flowing. We showed uh, lighting, signing, pavement markings, toll facilities. We had all the uh, roads cross the streets labeled. Uh, we did everything by standards. So if you were able to, if we gave you the model of this, you are able to jump in and measure to uh, get vertical clearances. And this is a continuation. You can see that on the bridges, we have a cantilever over an MSC wall. That's all to design. We are able to show the parking. This really shows the businesses, how they are going to be impacted. Uh, for advertising from the westbound to show that their business won't be able to be visible from the westbound now. This was also great for the public. We got to show homeowners in this area how this uh, construction job was going to affect their daily commute. So somebody pulling out of Sandy Creek that wanted to head eastbound would now have to take a right onto, East Colon or onto Colonial, go about a quarter mile, make a U-turn to get the direction they wanted to go. So I was able to show people, they would come up to me, ask if they could, I could go to their house by uh, report, fast forwarding or rewinding. And then we were able to show them the traffic pattern they would have to take from their house to get to their daily route. So it was really cool to show them. And we had a ton of people, the public loved it, got to see everything that was gonna go into this project and how it was gonna look after the years of construction it was gonna take, or years of construction it would take to do this project. Now, most companies that are doing this level of work in animation visualization uh, are just graphics developers. Uh, the difference here is that for WGI, we have our engineers working on these visualizations. So we have a unique perspective of understanding what the client's design elements are supposed to look like and how they're supposed to be reflected within the 3D space. Also, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those contractors that are, you know, doing the visualization for you, they maybe will give you one, two edits to their uh, visualization, whereas we're going to work with you and we have, uh, like I said, that unique perspective of what the engineering design is supposed to be. Uh, this is also right a set path that we're that we're showing uh, in the animation, but we can move anywhere around this 3D space. So for the public outreach, we put this up on a smart board, and we're able to interact with the model directly. The public is able to interact with the model, move around the space, uh, like John was talking about. Somebody from the public was asking about their specific location along this corridor. Right. And this is over nine miles of road that we were able to visualize. And again, this is a design coming from uh, from a client that we only did the visualization services on. Uh, so, you know, it's a great uh, effort that we put into this, but we think the benefit is there. I mean, you can really see all of the elements that are impacting most of the stakeholders on this uh, project. And, you know, this Colonial Parkway project is an example of the strength of visualization for any client, uh, because when you show up with this for public outreach, you are providing the public greater insights into the impacts to the businesses, to the stakeholders um, on how they're going to be affected. Uh, you know, we are layering everything in here from the aesthetics to the design components, including this toll facility we're going to pass. I mean, that is a, a two design toll facility with pull boxes. Um, you know, the high mass lighting is correct. The signing and pavement markings, uh, the driveway access, uh, everything has been checked by an engineer. Uh, who handled this visualization contract. And this is only on the visualization side for our client.
Now I want to dive into a live model. So this is the Banyan project that we were showing pictures of. I am able to bring this to a client meeting or interact with the client or the public, and I can move around in this model. As you can see, we constructed this typical section and we brought in everything required with this design. We have the drainage with the rain gardens per landscape design, sign in pavement marking, the curb and gutter. These uh, trees were all matching exactly what we were giving by design. This grayed out building here is a future uh, improvement that they wanted to see how it would uh, interact with this corridor. And this is really great because we can go in here. This is, uh, we can see if there's any conflicts, we can see if there's any design errors and we can really show the public what is going, what this is going to look like after construction. And we brought this model uh, or we brought these renders and the model to the city of West Palm Beach was the client uh, for this project. And they were really impressed. I mean, so was the public because you know, nobody likes driving through a construction zone. Nobody likes having to navigate the orange uh, construction barrels. There's a lot going on and the public can get really impatient um, when it comes to waiting for a project to come to life. When you can show both the client and the public that this is going to be the end result, it's much easier to be patient going through the construction because you can begin to picture the beautification that's going to happen in an area like this, you know, the road was pretty chewed up. Um, you know, a lot of the pavement was was cracked. Uh, there really weren't good pedestrian pathways on the outside. Uh, this project has a unique rain garden behind the curb. Um, you know, we worked with the landscape architects to lay out all the appropriate trees um, down the median and on the outside. And we can add movement to it, right? We have traffic, we have pedestrians um, moving about the corridor. We even have the county courthouse in the back left corner uh, for the city of West Palm Beach. So there's a great deal of value in uh, providing this during the public outreach meetings and during the client meetings to show them what they're getting beyond just the 3D model. So, you know, those are just a few of our project examples. Uh, what we wanted to go into next were digital twins. This has been like a big buzzword. Uh, if you went to Flug this year, you probably heard about digital twins a lot. If you, you know, uh, you, you probably might see that colleges are beginning to teach about digital twins. So we're gonna discuss what exactly digital twins are um, and what the benefits are, what we think the benefits are uh, to the AEC industry as a whole. So again, we're gonna start off with project inspiration, right? What inspired us to go down this pathway for digital twins? Well, uh, we saw a need to combine all of our assets into, uh, into one software. And for the past several years, we've really seen a limit to software capability. Um, you know, a lot of our components uh, in, you know, the engineering community uh, can be separated. So Digital Twins has kind of opened the door for us to combine several services into one software. Uh, so what is a digital twin? Well, it's essentially a digital reflection of a physical object or a system. So we became inspired by the idea of an up-to-date replica of a physical asset or one of our projects. So for instance, uh, it can be a building, a campus, even an entire city um, that can be digitally recreated, um, including you know, railways and you know, there are several applications for it. Uh, and, and you can bring together all the construction and operational data into one digital platform. So the problem and the opportunity here is that, you know, the main problem is our industry lacks innovation, right? We're underutilizing our data. We're collecting a ton of data overall, but it's all getting shoved onto an 11 by 17. So if you can see the bottom left-hand image is a typical plan sheet of a limited access um, roadway design. And that's a lot of data to fit onto one sheet, right? A flat 
2D plan, you have a lot of information going on. And that can be difficult to process for anybody. Uh, you're going to strain your eyes trying to you know, read through that sheet. So that's how we're doing it now. Well, we see an opportunity to really bring this data to life, not just through the visualization we're talking about, but a digital, a digital recreation of these assets. So taking our 3D model, putting it into a digital twin space, combining existing components, and really revolutionizing the way in which we deliver a project to a client. Um, changing the over-the-shoulder reviews, the phase reviews on a project, using a 3D model and a digital twin, adding 4D modeling. So that's adding, adding a scheduling component and the ability to reuse your model, right? Those plan sheets, when you get into the revisions, you know, you end up marking up that plan sheet. Well, how about making those changes and updating your 3D model itself? So there's a lot of opportunity with digital twin. So the solution is basically we are given a ton of data from a survey such as point clouds, the survey, the existing drainage, the existing utilities. So we will take all that data and bring it into the digital twin. We will then overlay our proposed models that are required by DOT with all their next gen plans and bring those into the digital twin as well. We can now also tag all of our proposed models with asset management, which includes quantity. So if you want to tag it with a quantity label, if you want to tag it with a picture, a link, a standard, you can tag that all in open roads now, and you can bring that all into the digital twin. So once you get into the digital twin, you're able to use their analytical tools to create horizontal vertical curve reports, cut a cross section, uh, open a profile view, measure quantities, see all the asset data, all the asset management, you can, it's super user-friendly because it's all in a web-based browser, so anybody can open it. It runs very smoothly, and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes to kind of learn the software. It's pretty simple. You just kind of follow the steps. And with it, you are able to have real time because all your models can update anytime you want them to. You can set a schedule. You can have them update every four hours. You can have them update on the weekend if you'd like. So whenever you go into that model, you know you have the most up-to-date uh, data from your proposed models and your asset management that you are importing into your models. For the transportation side right now, we are using the iTwin platform to host this digital model. This is a Bentley uh, product. It basically is a browser-based model that lets you bring in all your different references, all your different point clouds, and it has it all in a your layers show up so you can turn levels on and off if you don't want to see the survey file, if you don't want to see the utility file. You can turn it off with a click of a button. You can show the aerial. And I'm going to get into this a little more when I go through an example of opening the digital twin and showing a few of these tools. Um, you can upload the real-time data by having it uh, automatically change. You can also have sensor data that comes into your digital twin. As long as you have it uh, linked to it, you can have any picture of all of your site. And then they're in the process of making this digital twin import into NVIDIA's Omniverse software, which is a new software that is going to be a visualization software for these digital twins. Right now, WGI has an early access. So we are starting to mess around in this Omniverse to make, the, make these digital twins into a uh, visually pleasing. And you'll see where they're at right now before they go into Omniverse. They're definitely very usable at the point for an over the shoulder review with a client or a contractor to show them everything that's going on in the project and to show any conflicts that there might be. Uh, on the Autodesk side, they have a software called Autodesk Tandem, which is basically, I believe, going to be the same type of software, just more on the civil and Autodesk software side. What's our timeline for, for something like this for digital twins? Because we know a lot of people on the line uh, this can seem pretty new. It feels like 4D. I'm, I'm just learning about 3D. Uh, you're talking about 5D. So how to get started, right? What, what was our process in getting involved with digital twins? Well, currently we collected all of our data, right? We went through, we again said, okay, what's all, you know, what is all the information that we have? We have all of this great LIDAR data. We have all these wonderful assets. Um, you know, we have a pilot project, so let's start, you know, creating this digital representation of those projects. So 
in six months, we are looking at sensor data. We're looking at higher level graphics with NVIDIA Omniverse, and we're looking to continue to train our staff. You know, with technology like this, you constantly are going to need to be doing training and uh, learning these new softwares. You know, things can feel like they're moving really fast, but like John mentioned, a lot of this technology is user friendly. Uh, the software developers want us to use it. They want us to get more involved in the AEC industry. One year out, uh, we see an opportunity to host live models uh, with clients and provide PMs an opportunity to do those phase reviews to showcase construction sequencing within the digital twin to highlight proposed on top of existing with these point cloud datas. And again, the 4D simulations, adding in scheduling, adding in a time component. Beyond that, we're always looking ahead. We're always looking into the future. You know, we thought we had something with visualization and then digital twins comes along. So we want to kind of look ahead to see where is our industry going? Where does it need to go? Um, so, you know, we took a look at as built data, right? Reusing the models, the ability to take a design and update it with future projects. There's going to be signing and sealing of these 3D models, what is that going to look like? What is that process going to be like for engineers? Um, selling access, selling service uh, on that data. And then finally, 5D simulations, right? I know I've scared you enough with 4D simulations. What are 5D simulations, right? That's taking a further component with the scheduling and time aspect and possibly augmented reality, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so this was our current, uh, product roadmap for digital twins. Now, again, the feasibility question, right? Similar to visualization, we've received a lot of questions from clients about the feasibility of something like digital twins. Well, again, you know, we see it as a time and effort problem, right? Spending the time training and putting in the effort to test out these softwares uh, is going to be important for our industry. You know, WGI has, has spent a great deal of effort exploring this space and the benefits have been incredible. Um, you know, it's, it's a user-friendly software. Uh, Bentley has been fantastic at, you know, showcasing their iTwin platform to us in their web-based browser, uh, which you're seeing some examples on the screen here. This is data that we've collected from our geospatial group uh, we've put together this point cloud, right? A digital representation of existing points uh, that one of our cars has driven. We take that point cloud, we put it into the iTwin platform. Then we took our 3D model, something that we're already doing, right, for a project. We have this 3D model. Well, how can we get the most out of this data? Well, let's combine the two. Let's layer that 3D model on top of that point cloud and we can see impacts to the current existing conditions, right? So it's currently under construction in this area. So you see some orange construction barrels on the project. You can see that proposed ramp starting to come off the right-hand side of the screen. It's going to impact existing light poles. It's going to impact the existing utilities. What is our pond going to look like? You can see that highlighted blue area. That's our drainage pond on the outside. So, you know, once these components started coming together in the digital twin, you know, both John and I realized that the feasibility is, is there. It's, it's possible. We're doing it. Um, there are incredible benefits of tying assets into the model here, and we're actually going to jump into the digital twin here at the end. So uh, John's going to show us what exactly that digital twin looks like. Uh, you're going to see a lot of green as well. That's just a color issue with the survey. Um, so he's going to kind of jump through and show you the tools you can use uh, in the digital twin platform. This is going to be a quick tutorial just to show you a few of the tools that are used in the digital twin. Right now what I'm showing is the survey file, which is the green with the uh, existing utilities, all the different slopes. Uh, and then you can see we have our proposed models laid on top. Right now visually it's not that pleasing, but you are able to turn anything off and on in this model. Sorry about the zooming. 
you can come into the layers and come into your model tree and you will see every reference file that you have in here and you can come in and turn any reference off and on so if i wanted to turn the survey off you can see now as i have is proposed we or proposed or existing so we've modeled the existing drainage we've modeled the existing utilities model existing lighting uh, you can see it really helps with uh, conflicts by showing this existing light pole is going to be sitting right here in this ramp you can turn any of that off and on. This is a web-based browser, so it's really easy to use. You don't have to have any type of software. I can turn that survey back on. I can then come over here. There's a tons of tools. If I click on this element right here and I go to properties, you will see all the asset management and in that property. So you'll see the quantity. You'll see all the component layers. It will give you everything about that right there. I can click on this slope over here and it will give me the same thing quantity, layer, civil, it just gives you, it gives you the name. You can add links to this. You can add pictures to this to open. So it's very friendly that way. You come over here and you can do hit cross sections, perpendicular here cross sections. I can click on my alignment, baseline ramp G. And I pick a station and we'll just say 806 plus 40. It doesn't matter because I can come in here and change that to an even station. Enter. 806 plus 00. I've already added a horizontal uh, dimension with the slope. And you can see as I step through this, that will update for my super elevation. And you can see exactly what's happening with the corridor. So it's really cool to measure that. You can see all the existing features, the existing grounds, the existing utilities all show up. You can see your proposed. You have your able to add more horizontal measurements. You can measure areas in here and you can do this for every uh, alignment you have. And if you're not getting enough of the cross section, you come up here and drag it and it will expand your cross section to go farther. And it will add anything that's in the model through that cross section cut. You're also able to open a profile view of that same ramp. And you can see it gives you all your information on your profile that is uh, from your design file everything you would ever want, your K value, your uh, stopping site distance, your length, all that. And you can change the scale, you can change that. You can close out of this. You can also get horizontal and vertical curve reports. So if I click on this, I've already clicked it on that alignment and I hit this button here. You can see I have all the horizontal data for that uh, horizontal curve right here in the uh, uh, twin. I can also do station offset. I can do civil quantities. I can turn stuff on. If I want the uh, aerial to come in, I can click on the aerial to come in. And you're also able to um, make that aerial stick to the train. This does not stick to your train. It sticks, sticks to Bing's maps train. But you can see it's fairly close to what we surveyed out there. So that will give you, with your model, it will let it rotate and it won't float. <clears throat> So that sticks the uh, uh, aerial to the terrain. You can come in here and turn the shape file on. You can see all my LIDAR tracks come in right here. I can turn on the open, open street map buildings, which will turn on a shape file for all the houses. If I might have to turn off the enable. But your rally data, it should turn on. It takes a little while to load because it's adding a shape file for all these different houses. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. So you can get this. This will be exported into Omniverse. So you'll be able to take everything in here to Omniverse. You can see your versions. Uh, you can add your photos here. You can add your versions. So if you have a 30% model and a 60% model, you can show the differences of the models. And for time's sake, there's a lot of stuff I can show you in here, and there's a lot of tools like measuring and everything. But for time's sake, I'm going to uh, uh, go back to the PowerPoint and let Russell take over for AR. All right. Uh, thanks, John. Dallas, good afternoon. Um, my name is Russell Yeager. I'm the director of civil engineering uh, for WGI in the central region. Uh, I've been partnering with our research and development group here internally to develop um, an opportunity to visualize some of the items that you heard John and Dallas talk about previously, 
how do we take that data and bring it into the real world? How do we make it visible beyond uh, just the our office space? Um, so for those of you, if you've not seen augmented reality before, uh, it's been used for a long time, although it looked a lot different uh, when they first started putting it in airplanes as a heads-up display, as you see there in the top left corner. Um, now we have it in vehicles as a heads-up display uh, often, um, and maybe you, your kids are, are into Pokemon Go. That's a, that's a game version of using augmented reality there, or even uh, that's me talking to my kids on FaceTime on the bottom right corner as a teddy bear. You know, just these are fun ways to use augmented reality. But it is a really serious piece of technology and something that we can use to help visualize for our clients and for our teams in, in, internally uh, how we we identify things in the real out in the real world. So some reasons to use augmented reality is uh, is actually to take the uh, visualizations that we heard about previously and and put them out into space, see what they're gonna look like in the built environment. Uh, provide community outreach. So you heard Dallas talk a little bit about that with their visualizations. This is an opportunity for someone to see on their own device, on their own phone, on their own iPad, in the field, what something's gonna look like. Uh, as design professionals, a lot of times we have to tell a story of the future. And it's difficult for some people to visualize that and really understand what it's gonna look like. And this is an opportunity to bring that to life. Uh, and obviously there's an opportunity to do client branding, and uh, we've, we've done some tools for uh, apartment developers where they're able to show people what it's gonna look like in their space, a view from their window um, with this type of technology. Uh, this isn't a new technology, but it, it, the way that we're incorporating it with the data that we're able to collect is a new way to bring designs to life and walk through, and I'm gonna walk through some of the tools that we've built to help with that. So we decided um, as an organization that we wanted to give this, uh, be able to develop an app that we could actually take on the road with us. We could take it out into the into the field, into the site, and show people uh, what we're working with. So we've developed a, a platform. Um, it's an open platform. You'll be able to download it onto your phone directly from um, the App Store uh, or on a Google App Store. Uh, but it, it has password protections and proprietary login data that would allow you to protect your models either to your own personal team or take those models and give access to a client um, or somebody who uh, you want to see that model. Maybe uh, out in the field, you wanna show something off to uh, a neighborhood group. You can give access to that through QR codes or links. Um, the final product can be refined similar to the visualization we talked to from uh, the desktop to like you're seeing in this video here. Uh, we can actually put it out in space in real time in the field uh, and we can also tailor this to a virtual reality. If you um, are already using a headset to see things in virtual reality, we can tailor this to that as well. Uh, it provides local accuracy at, at that ties into the surrounding data. So um, it, you can actually go on site and it'll be geolocated to the real location and it'll show up within a foot accuracy on site. And we wanted to make this shareable and mobile and accessible uh, through this mobile-based app. So it's it's on iPhone or iPad or Google platforms. Um, that video that you saw right there was actually a grocery store that we designed. Uh, you can see all of the sewer and underground utilities there. It's a great tool for us to see it in the field and make sure people can understand what it looks like. So some of the services that we we want to provide here. Uh, this is not uh, an app that, that we're gonna send to you and have you figure out and learn how to use. We wanna be able to service you and use the tools that we've created to, to help you have a, a, a turnkey experience. So we don't need to have you take your CAD or Revit or MicroStation model and adapt it to the app. We'll take care of that. If you can send us your CAD models or your Revit models, we can bring them directly into our application and give you access to, to use them. Uh, we can put in scaled models, layers. We can do a schematic version all the way up to a fully rendered um, uh, application in the field. So you can see a, a real-time render like some of the ones that you saw from John and Thomas. Those do work better on iPads than some older phones. So if you have an older phone, you may need to upgrade to use some of those photorealistic renders, but they, we can do that as well. Uh, we want to be able to take you through the whole project. So just like you heard from John and Dallas, we want to start with an engineer design model. We have a team of people who are dedicated to this that are engineers. They're not just visualization specialists. They also understand what you're trying to accomplish. And as your model updates, 
as your project updates. We want to keep uh, these updates in, in the project. Um, again, like I mentioned, once the visualization is in your hands, you can use links, QR codes, and a number of other ways to share it with uh, your team or teams outside your firm. And we want to be flexible to work with you, whether that's on a single basis, maybe you have a specific project or a specific item that you want to do on a, uh, on a single project, or you want to use it as a subscription, like we, we would be able to do with somebody who has finish out services inside of a building. We can keep a model or a digital twin updated continuously so you can bring that into your space. Um, the video you just saw is actually, we've used some LIDAR data to, to pull subsurface construction um, into the real space there. And you can see as we're covering it up and we're still, we're adding layers to, to cover that water beater and those water pipes up, we're still able to see them digitally underground. Uh, and I knew you need to get an updated video of this where you can actually see it all paved and finished now, but uh, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to see what you built underground after it's done. So we're going to go through a couple other opportunities. This is a similar project that we saw before, but this actually uses the plan set itself. It's able to identify the plan set and bring it three dimensions into the file. So you can actually see those pipes, the, the store come to life and you can check them in the field. Uh, we have this geolocated as well. You can actually go in the field and make sure the manholes are in the right place. The crossings are in the right place uh, and everything's tied into the building. Uh, but you can bring your plans to life right there on the desktop. Uh, this is another example here that we've actually done for a client uh, who was working on a zoning case and working with the neighborhood. This is a 22-story hotel, and you can see that it's pretty significant on the landscape, and the neighborhood was pretty concerned about how it was going to fit in with the overall neighborhood, and we were able to model in an almost photorealistic way what it was going to look like, and then provide that link to neighborhoods to go take a look at it from, this is from the corner across the street. So can I actually see what it's going to look like from, from the neighborhood? The other thing that's nice in, the, in this video is, uh, if, and if you could hit play again on that, John, because I want you guys to notice, you can actually see the layers come in. So you can see the structure come in, and then the interior of the building come in, and the stairwells, and then the skin at the very end. So we can turn those into layers where you can actually see just the structure, just the MEP. You can start to identify conflicts in real time um, to the point that this one actually is got everything modeled in Revit all the way down to finish out. And you can see chairs and desks and tables and where they're going to be in the facility. Um, this really helped us work with the client to accelerate their approvals through the municipality. As you can imagine, a project like this takes a lot of agreement from the community. And to be able to have the community visualize what it's going to look like in the future really helped us to speed the process up and move it through the city for permit and, and design. So a couple of other ideas here, like I mentioned, my, mine's going to be pretty quick, but I want to spur your, your thought process on what you can do with this. Um, you know, public relations, we've talked about a number of times. One of the other things that we're doing right now with ULI in downtown uh, San Antonio is we're creating a digital guided virtual tour. So someone can take a tour of downtown San Antonio, see the buildings that are under design and construction as if they're finished um, using QR codes as you walk down blocks. Uh, it's something we're working with the uh, Centro, which is a nonprofit there in San Antonio to show what San downtown is gonna be in the next five years. Uh, construction and as-built cataloging, we can use the LIDAR scans that we talked about in the digital twin to make your digital twin come to life in the space. Um, we can build it with what Dallas and John talked about. And then when you're in the building, be able to show that cataloged digital twin, what's behind the walls in your space. And then obviously we've talked a lot about this, but it's a great opportunity for conflict resolution and identifying things on a construction site as they come up. So this is a, a brand new service from us and something that we're looking to roll out with clients and uh, get your ideas and opportunities on how we can work together with this type of visualization of the data from your project. Excellent. So we saw a couple of questions come through and uh, we just wanted to wait until the end to, to go back through them. Um, so, you know, we'll start with one of the first questions we have here, which was, you know, what was kind of beneath the surface of those models? And uh, really, it's whatever, you know, is of our choosing. So a lot of the 3D models um, are, are a, a surface that we're creating, and the depths are controlled by us. So for roadway design, we'll have depths of pavement. Um, you know, we'll typically just add in regular slopes. Uh, so beneath the surface sometimes is, is just that, it's just dirt. 
uh, pavement, dirt, depending on what the typical section is going to be. Um, we had a question about uh, labeling on the uh, on a 3D set of plans. So the same way that 2D plans have callouts, can these models add labels too? For example, is there potential to click on a curb and have a label appear saying FDOT curb type D? Uh, yeah, in, in the digital twin, uh, we are working on ensuring that um, the asset management is a strong component. This was something we really wanted uh, included. Uh, as far as adding labels, you could see on that Colonial Parkway project example how we had the floating labels, um, but selecting specific assets, right? Because that that's more of a, a, a visual aid, um, but clicking on the, uh, on the components themselves, you saw how John kind of went through the profile, the cross sections, that data uh, still holds its um, properties into the digital twin. So you can select uh, select these items and get information on them. Um, the uh, new quantity features within Open Roads allows you to add item types as well, which are tied to the pay items uh, from the FDOT. Uh, so you're going to see those properties uh, come through um, come through in the digital twin as well. Uh, so we'll be able to also add that quantities component. Uh, another question, does it update live? So uh, yes, we can set, we have to tell it to refresh like most things. Uh, it's, a, you know, most of these files are, are um, they are pretty large. So we aren't constantly updating it, you know, but we'll work on the design and then make sure that update is reflected. For instance, like let's say over a weekend or overnight that it updates the digital twin to reflect uh, any data that's changed. You can also manually update it at any time. So say you finish changing the geotech layer, you can then just click and hit uh, synchronize and it will automatically synchronize that file again right then. Uh, there was also a question on that of, you know, with the, uh, if a geotech layer info is being worked on and saved, do all other files referencing that file also prompt for an update of those layers. So the way you should have it set up and the way we set it up is that all of these are kind of tied together to update uh, in the correct file. So as long as it, as long as it's referenced correctly, uh, it should get updated and reflected in the in the model. Uh, oh, Jimmy Richie asked, what computer hardware is needed for this awesome modeling? Uh, Dallas, for the modeling itself, our norm, a normal or anything that handles CAD can do the modeling. For the visualization, you'll probably need a higher end graphics card and a higher end processor. I would recommend, I'm running an eight gigabyte memory graphics card, and then I have an i7 processor. Uh, you would need a, a little, for the graphics itself, you're definitely gonna need a higher computer, but for the modeling, all the three modeling, as long as you can run CADs seamlessly on your computer, you should be able to do all the modeling yourself. Uh, we got a question about, uh, have we or has anyone used this technology for stormwater modeling and flood plain management? So, it, it, you know, it sometimes can seem as though that drainage gets a little bit left out. Um, John's kind of showing how visually how we can represent changes in elevation on water. Um, this is something that's still being tested on the drainage side um, for whatever reason you know the stormwater modeling can can sometimes fall behind the rest of the software development but we do know that there are a great deal of software add-ons to uh for instance bentley autodesk has them as well um open flows and and so on there are a lot of different software add-ons that can be done to showcase stormwater modeling uh ran through your drainage system uh, is there capacity provide list of materials that also have opinion of cost? Yeah, so the uh, quantity reporting feature that comes with Bentley, and I believe Autodesk has one as well, um, can be tied to the tied to the model. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we get it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we had a question about estimated cost for FDOT. Staff hours can be negotiated. Um, yeah, so the, the DOT is 
beginning to include this, um, include some of these services uh, um, under their staff hours. Um, you know, the number fluctuates just because it is still a newer uh, add-on service. Um, you know, we work with a lot of our clients to make sure that, you know, it's the, th that they're asking for the right service. So visualization tied to a design, you know, we are pretty reasonable um, at cost. Digital twin is going to end up being probably a higher end service because of the amount of asset management that's going to go into it. Um, let's see here, Sue and uh, uh, I'll read through a couple more of these questions, but I want to make sure Russell gets one of his questions in. Uh, are your virtual tours uh, with the time dimension all done in Revit? or a comp uh, compilation of softwares compiled together? So when we do the virtual tours uh, today, we've not started to incorporate moving, um, I guess a time dimension that's moving in the field in an augmented reality. We can do that, but it's uh, the processing speed of most cell phones can't handle something that's uh, a live video and trying to geolocate at the same time. So we're working on that. Um, but as far as the ability for, for you guys, when you create those, um, uh, the time dimension in there, we can do that with, with different um, layers. So we can create different layers or different models that you can turn on and off through uh, like a staging concept that you could see in the field. They would just need to be, each one would need to be static because um, yet, although typically uh, cell phones catch up pretty quick, we don't have cell phones or iPads that can take on uh, all those different dynamics quickly enough and and uh, keep things moving forward. But we can do it with static images of different versions that that can allow you to see a timetable of a project. Great. Um, the question from uh, Lisa about uh, can uh, can digital twins test uh, the various options for traffic operations? So, this is uh, the traffic modeling is something that we've been discussing for years, how to get it incorporated in a way that looks um, that looks really good with the visualization. Uh, both John and I actually tested out a program called Visum in one of our models, and we found that it worked really well. Um, given enough time and effort, uh, yes, we can incorporate uh, traffic operations within either the visualization or the um, digital twin. We'd probably go the visualization route just because you have more options, uh, but you can add in um, signal timing and and movement of traffic. Well, Dallas, I was just asking, I think, uh, various operations for traffic operations. Uh, so I would assume it's, yeah, different ways of showing stuff. So you can have a time, you can have a video where it changes throughout the video and shows different alternatives, or you can show an MOT phasing like this one where it shows changes throughout time through this video. So there is a capability of doing this by doing a multiple layer uh, graphic. Um, yeah, yeah, because this is something that we get, you know, asked about a lot more as well as can you show the sequencing, right? It's really nice if, if it's concept or final, but what about in between? And uh, I saw there was a question about, about that actually. Can you start the visualization from concept and have it evolve as more detail is added? Can the evolution timeline of the design be illustrated? Uh, yes, the uh, design with our software that we use, anytime we make changes in CAD, we can re-upload those changes to that visualization software and it will keep all the uh, visualization components we've already added. So anytime we make a design change, it gets reflected into our visualization software and everything we have added stays the same. So we can keep making changes as the design progresses. And yes, it is great for uh, concepts. We've used it for many ATCs and alternative, techni alternative technical concepts to show in a very a very uh, start of a project. And we've also shown it at the end of a project. And you can just keep building upon itself with your design as it uh, changes. Yeah, this is one of those things where we say, you know, we were talking about future, right? As the software developers get uh, become more conscious of our needs as an industry, 
you're going to see a lot better um, software on the scheduling and time component, which you then can build into the phasing of your project. So you can show from concept, you know, pursuit to your 15% initial engineering, your 30% phase, 60, 90, 100, and then final. And then you can even go in, we can redrive the project and give an as-built digital twin representation that is, is final built design. So beyond what you know, we can show with the visualization, we can have an actual uh, digital twin of what was completed. Um, so it's pretty exciting to see where, where you know, the direction we're going and, and what we've been doing at WGI. Excellent. I think we went through all the, all the questions here. Um, so if, if there are any more, you can get them in real quick. Other than that, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I want to thank Russell and John. Um, we really enjoy what we do, and we would be happy to answer any more of your questions offline. So our contact information uh, will be provided with kind of a leave behind uh, for everybody that participated today. So please feel free to reach out to any of us. Uh, if you have projects you want to talk about, ideas you want to share with us, um, you know, this is something we, we really love. So please reach out to us. We hope you enjoy the presentation and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.